A couple months ago, we looked at the best B&M for every Six Flags park. The whole conversation came up because Six Flags, for the first time in 10 years, is working with B&M on something new. And if they continued that trend, what would be the best fit for each of their 15 parks? I got a lot of requests to do this for Cedar Fair also. And even though they never stopped working with B&M, it would still be a fun topic to look at. So let's dig into their 11 parks and see how we can make them better. These are the best B&Ms for every Cedar Fair park. Before we start, if you can drop this video a like, I'd appreciate it. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Just like Six Flags, let's limit this to two parks per model. I'm only using their active models, so I'm not giving out any sit-down loopers, floorless coasters, or stand-up coasters to anyone. Their sit-down model is technically still active, but that's just because Universal Beijing wanted a Hulk clone. I'm also going to eliminate the Giga. Every single one of Cedar Fair's big parks already has one, and we're going to try to keep this somewhat realistic. Michigan's Adventure, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get one. But Hypers are in the mix, and the first part getting one of those is Knott's Berry Farm. I know they submitted plans for a B&M Giga, but I don't know if that'll actually happen, so let's just look at the park as it stands right now. A Hyper is such a perfect addition for Knott's. It doesn't even need to be a Giga to be effective. I think that's overkill. A good out-and-back or square-shaped airtime-filled Hyper would be amazing. There's nothing else like that in Southern California. It would be a people-eater, a crowd-pleaser. It would be perfect for a park like Knott's. Maybe they see the Hyper as too similar to Goliath, and they want to do something to stand out. Maybe they want to brag about having the tallest drop in the state, or for that matter, the country. But ego aside, the Hyper fits knots like a glove. The other part getting a Hyper is also in California, that being California's Great America. Like knots, this was planned once upon a time, but this one never happened. I'd love to see it for a lot of the same reasons that knots should get one. There's nothing else like it around. They can really use that one marquee coaster that stands out above the rest. The park doesn't have any floater airtime, and just like Knott's, they don't have any free space. So a coaster like this could be out and back and use a very thin plot of land, and it could also be built over footpaths if needed. Knott's and Great America are the perfect candidates for a B&M Hyper, and even though they are in the same state, they're a good 6 or 7 hours apart, so they can coexist without a problem. Next up, let's talk about the B&M model that doesn't exist yet, the Surf Coaster. We may be seeing one going up at SeaWorld Orlando very soon, so that's exciting. This is a different kind of B&M. We should be seeing launches and inversions. Maybe more low to the ground, like an intimate blitz or a mock multi-launch. The first one of these I have going to Kings Island. I think the perfect, most practical addition to this park is a mock multi-launch. But if they wanted to go the B&M route, this would be it. The park has a couple Premier Rides launch coasters. Flight of Fear being intense, but also indoors. And Backlot Stunt Coaster being more family-oriented. I think a surf coaster would be a really nice fit on the old Vortex plot. It's still more likely to go with mock rides on this. But I'm just saying, in a B&M-centric world, this would be it. The same goes for Canada's Wonderland, the other part getting a surf coaster. I think Mach is more likely to get this job, but given Cedar Fair's affinity for putting B&Ms in Canada's Wonderland, this has a shot. This park also has a backlot stunt coaster, but nothing that has a launch and inversions. An adult launch looping coaster is the next logical coaster for this park. Plus, Cedar Fair likes testing out new stuff here, and there's nothing newer than a B&M surf coaster. On to the dive coasters. Let's give the first one to Michigan's Adventure. This place can use a lot of help, but a dive coaster of any size would draw in a lot of people. The vertical drop still gets the GP, even if us coaster enthusiasts are a little more desensitized. And if Six Flags can buy a B&M dive, then Cedar Fair can get one in Michigan's Adventure. Get that vertical drop gimmick, at least 150 feet in height. Throw in some modern inversions, not some janky core screws or some SLC elements. In 20 years of ownership, Cedar Fair has never thrown this park a bone. This is their chance to finally do it. The only option that wouldn't make a lot of sense here is an invert. That would kind of step on the already popular Thunderhawk. The other dive is going to Dorney Park. This park already has a B&M Invert and a Floorless, along with a Morgan Hyper. It's also not too far from Great Adventure, so I gotta take that into consideration. They have five B&Ms, including a Hyper and a Flyer. Nothing around them has a dive coaster. You'd probably have to go west to Cedar Point, or south to Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and those aren't close. This would stand out as something different at the park. I don't see a reason why a dive wouldn't work here. Now for wing coasters. In the first park, I have getting one of these is King's Dominion. There are a lot of options here. They only have one B&M, and that's a floorless. But they're in the same town as Busch Gardens, and that's B&M Central. They have a dive, a hyper, and an invert. And they try not to step on each other's toes, being one hour apart. The nearest wing coaster is over at Dollywood, and that's not close to King's Dominion. This was also one of the rumored replacements for Volcano. For a while, that looked like it was definitely in the works. Not sure if that's still the case. If it is, I like the addition. It would complement Dominator well as another inversion machine, just with the added gimmick of being on the side of the track. The other wing coaster is going to Carowinds. They already have four B&Ms, including the Giga, Hyper, Invert, and Stand-Up. 
They also already have a flying coaster in Nighthawk, as well as a multi launch in Copperhead Strike. I think a dive coaster would be a good option here also, but I've given all of those out, so I'm going with a wing coaster. I think this is also a great option. This kind of packs a lineup of wing coasters along the southeast, from Dollywood to Carowinds to King's Dominion, but with four hours separating those parks, I think it's fine. They aren't lacking an inversion machine, but they don't have anything on the side of the track, so this is a gimmick they can sell. Now for the flying coasters, and I'll get the elephant in the room out of the way, Cedar Point. This is a park that has just about everything, with or without B&M. They got their Hyper and Giga before B&M came up with them. Then they got an Invert, Dive, Wing, plus the Flawless. The Surf Coaster is a possibility here, but I think it works better for parks that currently have a flyer or used to have one. Cedar Point has never had any kind of flying coaster, and knowing them, they can make one really crazy. Something like Flying Dinosaur or Starry Sky Ripper. This idea gets passed around every time Cedar Point's new coaster comes up, and I don't see why it wouldn't work. We go to a much smaller park for the other flyer, and that's Worlds of Fun. Not all flying coasters are made equal, and if Cedar Point gets the 180 footer, maybe Worlds of Fun gets a scaled down Superman clone. After 13 years without any kind of new coaster whatsoever, I'm sure any kind of B&M flyer would be welcome here. They have an invert, and that's it for the B&Ms. They also have a hyper. Basically, anything else would be awesome here, so why not give them a flyer? There's nothing like it for hundreds of miles. I think you have to go to Six Flags Great America to find the nearest one. The final model is the invert, and like with the Six Flags parks, this is a good option for the smallest parks. For Six Flags, almost all the parks have a B&M invert or Vacoma SLC anyway. That's the case for Cedar Fair also. The only parks missing one or the other being King's Dominion, now that Volcano's gone. And the other one is Valley Fair, and that is the perfect option for an invert. Somehow this park has avoided ever getting a B&M, and they have a total of one coaster with inversions, and that's Course Group. They do have a coaster under the track with Steel Venom, but giving Valley Fair a small scale 3 to 5 inversion invert would be perfect for the park. The nearest invert is probably Six Flags St. Louis or Great America. This simple addition, the one that most parks were adding 25 to 30 years ago, that would be right up Valley Fair's alley right now. The other park is kinda off the board, and we have already given a coaster to Cedar Fair's main 11 parks. And with one more invert to hand out, let's give one to Gilroy Gardens. Yeah, I know this is a family park. They haven't gotten a new coaster in over 20 years. This park isn't even about that, but hear me out. Family suspended coaster. I guess that's not an invert, technically, but it's what Gilroy Gardens can use. This has been in production since 2014, and two exist in China. It hasn't exactly caught on, with other manufacturers offering the same thing and being more popular. Not to mention, probably cheaper. If Cedar Fair was going to add anything from B&M for Gilroy Gardens, I bet this would be it. Here's the final rundown for who's getting what. The Hypers are going to Knott's and California's Great America. The Surf Coasters are going to Kings Island and Canada's Wonderland. The Dive Coasters are going to Michigan's Adventure and Dorney Park. The Wing Coasters are going to Kings Dominion and Carowinds. The Flyers are going to Cedar Point and Worlds of Fun. And the Inverts are going to Valley Fair and Gilroy Gardens. Let me know what you think about these picks. If you think I got each park's best option on here, given my limitations. Or if you think it should have been something different, and why. Is there another park in the chain other than Knott's that could possibly get a B&M Giga in the future? I don't see it, which is why I left it off this list. But if you have any other ideas, send off in the comments below. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here and love coaster content, please consider giving me a sub. I put the link for the best B&Ms for every Six Flags park down below. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you like baseball content also. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.